have a book here with me so I can do the whoosh whoosh whoosh. <laughs> Hello everyone, and they here, and I hope you've been having amazing reads. The year is almost ending, so get that last book in, and I've been having some great reads as well. Today I'm going to talk about one of them, but yeah, before we do all that, don't forget to subscribe, like the content, and yeah, let's go. So today's book is The Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Huang. And maybe you know already about this book. I only heard about it recently and I'm in love with it. This is a mostly fantasy book, a standalone book. It has some like some bits of science fiction, just like a, a dust, a powder, but it's mostly fantasy and it has huge Avatar, The Last Airbender vibes. I, I mean, not the bad, Avatar, like not the movie, we're talking about the anime, I thought it had some inspiration from it, I don't know if that's accurate or not, but I loved it. Nonetheless, I thought it was a great overall, and I'll delve into it, but just for some details, this book came out in 2018, so fairly recent, and it was an indie published book, which was great, because it's always good to see indie publishers be successful like this, and like, the Sword of Kaigen has already multiple special editions. It has 17,000 ratings on Goodreads with a score of 4.45 out of 5, which is really good when we come when it comes to Goodreads. So yeah, overall a great success for ML Huang. But let's set averages aside and talk about why I like this book, but not before we deal with the synopsis. Of course, we have our timestamp floating around. Jump into that timestamp if you don't want to hear anything about it and you just really want to know what I think of the book. But if you don't mind the slurp, the slurp, the blurb that exists on the back of the cover, then stick around. A mother struggling to repress her violent past. A son struggling to grasp his violent future. A father blind to the danger that threatens them all. When the winds of war reach their peninsula, will the Matsuda family have the strength to defend their empire? or will they tear each other apart before the true enemies even reach their shores? High on the mountainside, at the edge of Kaganese Empire, live the most powerful warriors in the world, superhumans capable of raising the sea and wielding blades of ice. For hundreds of years, the fighters of the, fighters of the Kusanagi Peninsula have held the Empire's enemies at bay, earning their frozen spit of land the name the Sword of Kaigen. Born into Kusanagi's legendary Matsuda family, 14-year-old Mamoru has always known his purpose, to master his family's fighting techniques and defend his homeland. But when an outsider arrives and pulls back the curtain on Kaigen's alleged Age of Peace, Mamoru realizes that he might not have much time to become the fighter he was bred to be. Worse, the empire he was bred to defend may stand on a foundation of lies. Izaki told herself that she left the passions of her youth behind when she married into the Matsuda home. Determined to be a good housewife and mother, she hid away her sword along with everything from her days as a fighter in a faraway country. But when her growing son asking questions about the outside world, the threat of an impending invasion looming across the sea, and her frigid husband grating on her nerves, Mizaki finds the fighter in her clawing its way back to the surface. Now let's jump back into the actual review. Starting with the plot, it's nothing short of a masterpiece. ML Huang weaves a narrative that is as intricate as it is emotionally charged. I think the author was able to balance very well the anticipation and revelation that pull and push throughout the whole book. And the themes of choice and sacrifice and power, those were all so well explored and explained in the book. I, I really enjoyed it. I think the pacing is spot on. I, the twists happened at the exact moments that they should have. They left me completely ga gasping and my, my jaw was dropped. I was almost like talking to the Kindle and saying, no, this cannot be happening, or oh my god, this is happening. So it was very good at the pacing and making the twists at the right time and the, that push and pull that I spoke. Overall, yeah, great. I think in the category, the Sword of Kagan earns a 5 out of 5, no questions asked. Now let's talk characters. In the Sword of Kaigen, Mamoru and Misaki are brilliantly crafted. I think each character possesses such a depth, complexity and richness to their character that it adds life into the book. It feels like real people. I think their struggles, their growth and the relationships between the different characters is what makes this book 
great in terms of the character category. I think I was feeling the exact feelings that the characters were feeling. This was too many feelings in one go. Um, but I, it's just, it shows how Emma Hong was able to craft these characters to be as real as they can be and make the reader connect with them right away. I feel like even smaller characters that would be considered just side characters or secondary characters, they had their own personalities and their own traits that I could immediately connect with them and I could feel despair, pain, happiness even with them as well as with our main characters. And that's not easy to do with just you have a lot less detail but you feel just as connected. So again, for characters, solid 5 out of 5. I think the world building in The Sword of Kaigen by Emma Wong was brilliant and it just shows how Emma Wong's craft is amazing. And this is also where the Avatar The Last Airbender vibes come from mostly. I think the Land of Kaigen, with its unique magic system, the cultural nuances, they, they really felt like a real world. I know that there were parts that were inspired in our world and I sometimes complain about that when the similarities are too similar, but I didn't feel it like this. And I think the magic system was very well explained, it made sense and it was, I wanted to explore more and I wanted to know more on how they control it, how they can use it and yeah, I, it was one of those books where I felt like I want to know I want to read more books in this world to know more about, about the world itself. It's like you mixed Avatar The Last Airbender and The Ghost of Tsushima into a book. Kind of like that mix. I don't know if you know The Ghost of Tsushima, a PlayStation game that was quite good, very beautiful in terms of the art that was applied to it. But yeah, it's a similar vibe to that, to those two mix. I think the author was able to weave details about the world and about the magic system without overwhelming the reader and that's quite important so it doesn't look like an info dump. It blends very well the tradition, the magic, the societal intricacies, the culture itself. So yeah, overall world building another 5 out of 5. Moving on to writing style, Emma Huang describes landscapes very well. The sequence of martial arts is intense and it has the details that it needs to carry. And of course, the nuances of the characters' emotions and thoughts, those are also very well described. And it's impressive because um, it's not a descriptive prose. I think overall the author has quite a direct and simple, not a bad simple, but just clear prose. The only thing that I thought wasn't the best and damages a bit the score is the ending of the book. So the pacing overall of the book is good, except towards the ending where it felt a bit rushed. And the problem is sometimes it feels rushed but still conclusive, but in the end I didn't feel like it was completely conclusive. Okay that the major plot lines were closed and it was all tied well in a bow, but I don't know, it still felt weird in some points and a bit disjuncted. Almost like there were other aspects of the book that would lead to sequels, but I don't think that's the case because the author has a post on their blog saying that they won't be publishing anymore in this world for now. So yeah, while not a perfect 5, this category goes for a 4 out of 5, but again, very very close to a 5. Last but certainly not least is enjoyment. Did I enjoy this book? I think The Sword of Kagen is a gem waiting to be discovered. I mean, it's been discovered by many already, but if you haven't read it, this is the time. It doesn't only have a captivating story, but it makes you think about what's happening and about the things discussed in the book. It has action, emotion, magic, and it's a book that stays with you for a long time. Multiple times I was reading this book, I wasn't expecting and I was hit with scenes that got me really close to crying in the public transport, which is a bit um, weird to see someone almost crying while having their Kindle on the train, but I mean, that's what happens with this book. It was just that powerful. So I don't think it's anyone's surprise when I say that for enjoyment, this book was a five out of five. In summary, The Sword of Kaigen by Emil Hong is a triumph in the fantasy section. It has a stellar plot, compelling characters, immersive world building, and an evocative writing style. Of course, while it's not flawless, I think its strengths far outweigh their weaknesses. I mean, with a total score of 4.8 out of 5, that's pretty much a 5. On Goodreads, this book is a 5 for me. And if you haven't read it, it definitely deserves a spot on your TBR. I mean, 
on Goodreads, I do not understand how this book doesn't have a score of 4.5 or above. I know it's close, but it should definitely be above that. But so what are your thoughts on the sort of Kraken? Does it resonate with your love for fantasy? Or do you have different insights compared to the categories I gave? Share your thoughts down below, comment. Again, no spoilers, please. Or if you're gonna spoil, please say spoilers before so that people can be aware and not be spoiled. Because I mean, I really don't want to spoil the experience of reading the world of Kaigen for the first time. And for newcomers, welcome to the channel. I hope you enjoy the content. If you do, please subscribe, like the comment, and we'll be seeing you again very, very soon. But for now, keep having good reads and, I mean, not go to the website, just have good reads in general. And I'll be seeing you soon, all right? Bye.